Okay, so we're now live no, at the uh, HR on the go, Clark HR Council Facebook page. So I'd like to greet everyone no, uh, ng magandang hapon. And of course, mabuhay and welcome to the HR on the go. So we're hot uh, t- trends, no, hot topics relating to HR and people management are coming your way. So balak, uh, buckle up and uh, prepare for takeoff. So again, HR on the go is a joint collaboration of Clark HR Council and uh, CPHR Philippines airing live on uh, CHRC Facebook page every other Tuesday. So if you're looking to be featured, no, just send us an email at uh, go at clarkhrcouncil.org. And of course, if you're also interested in becoming a uh, Clark HR Council member, no, please join us via www.clarkhrcouncil.org slash join. And of course, enjoy no, benefits like access to Ask HR, which is an HR forum, access to Jumpling portal no, with uh, featured rich job posting with unlimited job posts and, of course, manage unlimited candidates. No? Uh, with, of course, member insights as well, free HR templates, HR library, job fairs, weekly sessions, and, of course, general me- membership meetings. So speaking of uh, general membership meeting, we will be holding our 23rd uh, GMM tomorrow, so at 4 PM. We are joined by our guest speakers now from the industry, uh, from the offices of uh, Dole, SSS, uh, PhilHealth, and Pag-ibig. No? Of course, uh, for non-member, you may join the uh, general membership meeting no, for only 600 pesos no, per attendee. And of course, 350 for our members. Now, for assess, uh, first attendee is, of course, um, is free no, with numbers of inclusions, such as not just the attendance and certificate of completion, but we'll be giving away lots of prizes. So um, for more information about our general membership meeting, now feel free to visit our Facebook page, Clark HR Council, and our website there, no? um, yung ating um, Clark um, HR Council website. And of course, we would also like to invite everyone uh, for our um, upcoming um, CPHR designation from a Certified Practitioner in Human Resources Philippines. So we have now, uh, we'll be now rolling out no, a Certified um, Senior Professional in Human Resources, which is for senior level uh, CPHR designation, globally recognized, of course, as a proficient level of achievement within the field of uh, human resources. So this highlights no, the solid understanding and strong conviction that of course the professional practice of human resource management no uh, ay, ay malaki yung ating um, conviction so the GA assembly is an equivalency program i uh, meaning to say you don't have to take no a, a two day program so you just have to take the examination and uh, um undergo no um several uh, interview process no like uh, uh, checking the validation of your experience and then once validated uh, you will now be accredited as a Certified Senior Practitioner in Human Resources. So the deadline for this application uh, would be on the 20th of October. So the confirmant would be naman on uh, the 29th of October. So for more details, please uh, visit now our website at www.cphrph.com or you can also visit our Facebook page. No? Um, CPHR Philippines. All right, so wag na natin patagalin pa, no? So how is everybody doing? So did you know that, uh, uh, of course, there are only 95 days until Christmas. So as Filipinos, of course, we are known um, as one of the countries with the longest celebration of Christmas. So kamusta ang mga parol natin? Ang Christmas lights natin, etc. Nakabiliwi na ba at nakapag-prepare na? So if hindi pa, so we have all the time in the world not to prepare. And now, in our third episode, no, we are going to talk about a very interesting topic, no, which will uh, help us understand uh, the rising interest of uh, PCSR or the Political Corporate Social Responsibility, no, um, ng uh, businesses, no, as of course our uh, moral obligation. Now we tend to we tend to believe no, and sometimes um, before we used to believe it as a fact. No, businesses and politics are frequently assumed to collide only um, when corporations lobby for policies on specific topics that affect, of course, um, their bottom lines. But of course, the complete separation of politics, economy, and society, on the other hand, has been always a myth, no, rather than a reality. 
So before sa CSR siguro it's really uh, a separation of politics and economy and society. But now with the rising interest of uh, of PSR or political corporate social responsibility, we now have the moral obligation of being politically uh, responsible as organizations, not just sa mga ano natin, sa mga multinational corporations, but even to the very uh, organizations of small and medium-sized enterprises. So uh, companies should also be more politically responsible. No, in the 21st century, most especially, in encouraging no to exercise. Uh, their right to vote in the coming and future local and national elections. So we all know na paparating na no ang ang uh, ang election. So what no um, as an organization do we do um, in in um, helping employees no to practice their right or exercise their their rights no to to vote no. So of course um, using real life examples and insights from an experienced guest no very special guest. Um, Dr. Francisco Villanueva Jr. will provide practical guidance on how to have uh, businesses recognize, as a, of course, then yung ano, um, free enterprise system. Now, to help introduce our guests no, for today, um, Dr. Francisco Villanueva Jr. is a professional management consultant with over 30 years of experience in general management, operations, finance, and marketing in various industries and sectors that include real estate, media, government, academe, trading, and NGO operations. He is currently now the president of the City College of Angeles and a guest lecturer at the Ateneo Graduate School of Business and three other autonomous universities. So a significant part of uh, Dr. Frank Villanueva's time is devoted to development uh, entrepreneurship through active participation in various uh, NGOs and foundation. And he is also the chairman of the Metro Angeles Chamber of uh, Commerce and Industry um, Incorporated, the president of the American Chamber of Commerce North Luzon Chapter, and the Supply Chain Management Association of the Philippines North Luzon Chapter. And of course, is the immediate past president of the Clark Investors and Locators Association Incorporated, and a director in four other NGOs. So as you can see, you know, um, Dr. Frank Villanueva is really um, a very uh, a very immersed no, corporate citizen of this, uh, of this uh, city, not just this city, but this, uh, this country. So Frankie, as he's called by friends and associates, he has a management engineering degree from the Ateneo de Manila University, and a master in business management from the Asian Institute of Management and a doctorate in business management from the Holy Angel University. He also completed the strategic business economic program at the University of the Asia and the Pacific. And of course, no, um, bigay tayo ng isang facts, no, dahil nasa Clark H.A. Council tayo. Um, Dr. Frankie Villanueva Jr. is also one of the founding leaders, no, ng Clark HR Council. Now, um, without further ado, let us welcome Dr. Frankie Villanueva Jr. Good afternoon, Dr. Frankie. Uh, good afternoon, Jester. Thank you for inviting me at us. And I'd like to congratulate you for what you are doing for the HR Council. And I'm very happy na I think uh, HR practice in Clark has evolved. Medyo mataas na ang inaabot niya. It's now more of a strategic HR. Uh, mm -hmm. yung, the days when HR was looked as a support department, tapos na. Right now, HR is the leading department when it comes to strategic planning. Okay, so, so let's go ahead. And of course, uh, I'd like to uh, say thank you also to... To your, to your viewers for giving us giving me this opportunity to be with you. Ayan, thank you, Dr. Frankie. No, so uh, tama no before no ten years ago as as what uh, Dr. Frankie envisioned it nung nung tinayo niya yung sila no. They started yun nga an HR organization before uh, more than ten years ago, but now uh, it it seems that uh, there are a lot of HR leaders now taking um um uh, a responsibility and uh, an initiative to. Help, of course, no build no the Clark uh, community as well. So with that, no, we'd like to extend our thanks no to Dr. Frankie and the team no who initiated itong ang ating um, Clark HR Council. Now, 
going back to the uh, very interesting topic of ours no as as we all know especially to the viewers no um political corporate social responsibility is somehow new to them unlike uh, to mncs or multinational corporations who has taken part in in providing aid no to address regulatory gaps no by our uh, to our government so Konting FYI lang or um, information. So political, corporate social responsibility, you know, this involves uh, businesses taking a political role to address regulatory gaps you know, caused by, of course, um, uh, the challenges you know, um, na nakukuha ng, ng ating government. So usually, yung political CSR, it's only uh, um, only the MNCs or the multinational corporation can address yun nga environmental and social problems that arises globally no um along with their supply chains of course now uh, ngayong chance na ito no we would like to uh, inform then and encourage SMEs nan uh, to to pr present a major share because as we all know small to medium enterprises as well din naman hindi lamang multinational corporation no uh, represents a major share of economic value creation no worldwide and are increasingly exposed to um, regulatory gaps so yun yung ating pag-uusapan no from from today's session now um i would like to ask um dr Fra uh, no dr franky no so uh, as we all know before we used to to believe no the the notion that the uh, uh, politics, economy, and society have a complete separation. But uh, in, in this time, no, in this is in this years, no, our politics, economy, and society do really have a complete separation, or do they have shared responsibilities, naman? Well, it's almost impossible to isolate any of these three from each other, because when you talk about politics, what is politics? This is how a group or a so makes decision to distribute wealth and power. Basically, that's what politics is about there. Eh? And then when you talk about society, then of course, this is a, a, a group that is uh, held together by certain rules and objective. And politics is there also. And then of course, uh, your economy, of course, is how we create value. In fact, mm -hmm. if you take a look at the, from the economic point of view, you can take a look at like, take a look at Philippines. Mm -hmm. The Philippines, if you consider it as one household, parang may two earners yan. Yung private mm -hmm. sector uh, earns about uh, about 85% of the revenue. Right. While the government uh, makes about 15% of the revenue. And they mm -hmm. share. Parang magkasawa yan. They share, they have a common ma common fund of resources. However, if you liken it, liken it to magkasawa, it's government that, that sets the rules on how money is made, how to make money in the Quan. So you'll notice that there is an interplay. Uh, government uh, will, will affect, can influence uh, business because you know, laws and regulation and the ease of doing business is a function of government. Correct. And like, for example, you, you train two, when the mm -hmm. train two was being passed, Talaga, there was a huge panic among investors, whether local or international, or international, because it affects their their business model. And there had there was a lot of dialogue that went between government and Quan to try to refine it. And then, of course, business can also influence government because most of the money that government makes comes from business mm -hmm. and the income of people business employed. So these are two some symbiotic ito in government and and the uh, the and the private sector, and that's why and the and the other thing is if you take a look at the uh, companies or business enterprises they have evolved. Nung nagupis ay at the onset of the industrial revolution ano ba mga ito? These are sweatshops that are. Uh, Ayun, as an HR, you, you understand yung mga scientific management theory that they were all concerned with rationalization, making mm -hmm. the most money, and treating the human element as uh, as just an input. And then it, mm -hmm. it evolved, and then it involved, and, and then it started considering its stakeholders, which would be the people, the, the buyer, uh, its suppliers, customers. And then now, uh, finally, uh, business organization realize that they operate within a community and an environment 
And that is why right now, business also need to take care of their environment and community to serve. That's why yung CSR lumabas. And mm -hmm. it went since it, they also realized that, well, the government governance has a huge impact on business, then so political CSR came to be. Yeah, so that's how it, so. Oh. Yeah, so what, what Dr. Frack is, is uh, telling us is, no, of course, uh, through strong connection with the government, no, firms are now uh, would like to protect themselves no, from, of course, external regulatory uh, threats no, and exploit no, various, uh, for example, political favors, etc. For example, like favorable tax policy, no, relaxed acts or regulation, uh, gaining easy access to the public resource. So yung uh, sinasabi nga ni Doc Frank is that, uh, um, as organizations nga, no, have the the uh, the um, parang has the uh, responsibility then to to lobby no um, policy makers then for us to to maximize then no um, yung yung interest ng organization as we all know that uh, uh, meron ngang effect yung um, uh, political activities no sa ating sa ating market so it is our goal and our responsibility no to to help uh, manage no yung yung uh, Yung, uh, ito, no? uh, to influence no? of course the the regulation of course also in the favors of um, organizations so which is why no kahit na meron tayong free enterprise system no uh, meron pa rin tayong uh, role no as as uh, organizations no to to lobby so um doc frankie you know, what are the common interactions ba between uh, business and politics no so it's like a refresher uh, for everyone, especially sa mga bagong bukas ngayon na organization, sa mga SMEs natin? Well, of course, uh, it all starts out that uh, whenever you go, whether it's in a city or in a, deciding to go into a city or in a country, the first thing you look at is how is the governance there? It's mm -hmm. like, again, we go back to the analogy of marriage, mm -hmm. uh, Siyempre, the moment ikaw as a businessman, the moment you invest a lot of resources, parang you are getting married. You are committing. So, so, of course, you'd like to, when you marry, you'd like to marry somebody who is one who works well with you. Remember, happy wife, happy life. Correct. Same thing here. <laughs> if you have good governance, then you will have good business. But, of course, uh, now, typically, in, in bad situations, business is taking advantage of government and government and vice versa. Mm -hmm. No, it should be symbiotic because, of course, uh, uh, like uh, there, we always hear the term uh, regulatory capture. When a, when, a, when a businessman influences a regulator uh, to favor him, yun. So, hindi level playing field yan. Kasi mm -hmm. I think in business, what we want is level playing field, free enterprise. Now, government, as much as possible, the role of government is not to participate in business. Mm -hmm. Only when there's market failure. Like, for example, mm -hmm. in, in, kung ikaw negosyante, hindi ka naman magpapatayo ng MacArthur Highway and then let people go there for free. Correct. Malulugi ka. So, in that mm -hmm. case, business can take over. O sige, mm -hmm. my business to put up highways. Now, so there's regular, but whenever possible, whenever private sector can do it, uh, government should let private sector operate. At mm -hmm. pabayan lang niya yung, yung mga, yung mga rent-seeking, uh, we call it rent-seeking activities or in pang -abuso. Like for example, monopoly. There was a time that government was even supporting monopolies. Mm -hmm. Pero ngayon, they're trying to control monopoly for, there's a competition law already. They promote free market trade para there is the greatest efficiency. Alam mo naman yung sinasabi ni Milton Friedman, the, mm -hmm. ano, the endless pursuit of self-interest will lead to the uh, highest efficiency for consumer. Uh, that's in a free market. So whenever that's possible, government should, should lay low. So now, however, yun, so it is incumbent upon business now to help government govern well. Mm -hmm. Kasi dapat the country is my business. Yan ang lumalabas na model. Because mm -hmm. if you're, the country is governing well, pro business will, will prosper. And mm -hmm. everybody else, society will prosper. Mm -hmm. So, dati rate, I think the mentality is we try to take advantage of government. In fact, uh, let's take a look at the Philippines. Mm -hmm. 
In the six, early 60s, we were the second biggest economy in Asia, second to Japan only. And then by the 70s, 80s, 90s, we were the sick man of Asia. Why? What went wrong there? I think if you ask mga economists, we were an oligarch economy. There are strong uh, businessmen with political clout that are ruling, that are being favored. And when you, when you have an oligarch economy, the, the, kasi a lot of times there are monopolies and all of that, it is very inefficient and very, uh, it does not lead to the highest efficiency and it's oppressive. And that is why we want this government now, we are always uh, working with government to make sure that they, there is policy reform to enhance this uh, the governance and uh, business con conditions. Right, right. So um, a while ago, no, we talk about the uh, free market or the free um, enterprise system. No? So you, can you tell, no, especially sa mga SMEs natin, no, um, can you help no, um, discuss and uh, share kung ano nga ba itong free enterprise system na ito? Well, oh, again, free enterprise system is a, is a situation when natural market forces are in control. So mm -hmm. supply, demand, yung mga kwan. So that, this is always best there's highest efficiency and mm -hmm. but and government only does not interfere para, unless it needs to mm -hmm. now uh, right now uh, when you started the program you said a lot in the past puro one mnc multinational corporations and mm -hmm. practice some political uh, uh, CSR. Mm -hmm. I, still in the cloud, eh. I remember no, uh, like when texas instrument went here to the philippines to invest the mm -hmm. government salgang put out some policies to, to make it attractive for them to come because mm -hmm. they're a big company, make cloud sila. However, for SMEs, there's still a way. Just be active in mga local business chambers. Be active in the Clark HR Council, things like this. Business organizations can put you, can make you strong collectively, especially when you're dealing with the politicians and all of that. For one thing, if you have size, you have political capital. Makikinig sayo. Mm -hmm. ang, ang, and at the same time, nakaka, mahirap naman kung ikaw lang nagre-reklamo. Sa, baka pag-initan ka pa. Yeah, but if it's done to the organization in a very, very uh, a rational way, hindi naman abrasive, uh, you can make a lot, you can influence government. Mm -hmm. Correct. No? So it's a good reminder. No? So MA, um, SMEs no? also represent a major share, um, which is actually no, uh, dito sa... sa 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 mundo no so so it's very important for us no to to um, be politically uh, um, responsible no it's our moral imperative no um, as business leaders no especially sa SMEs no to to uh, which as actually calls no conscience no that calls for us um, SMEs to con reconsider how our companies no uh, political activities are affecting the various um, systems, no, uh, which markets democracy and society depends. So a while ago, no, we talk about the free enterprise system, but um, is there still a relationship, um, Doc Frankie, uh, between the government and the free enterprise system? Well, the government will just act not will not act as a player, but mm -hmm. as a referee umpire to make mm -hmm. sure that everybody's playing nice. That mm -hmm. should be the role of the government. Yeah. But unfortunately, a lot of times the government it becomes also a player. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is like, for example, a lot of GOCCs, mga government owned and controlled corporations, um, should not be operating anymore because they are doing functions that can be done by the private sector. Mm -hmm. Yet, uh, a lot of them continue to exist and mm -hmm. they continue to remit money to the government. Mm -hmm. In fact, the government is even encouraging them. May mga exclusive, the billion, uh, the billion peso club. Because it's not the role of government to make money. Mm -hmm. It's just to go regulate and go govern. However, I, uh, I think that uh, that started out kasi nung, as we were, we used to be a poor country. Awalang mm -hmm. pera ng gobyerno. That's why he start, they started forming GOCCs. But now that we are doing very well, I think a lot of the GOCC should. I ca I came from a GOCC before because I used mm -hmm. to be with CDC. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of the GOCC should 
In fact, I think originally the GCG made a recommendation to to uh, well to then former President Benigno Aquino and to to retire some of the GOCCs because they are not necessary anymore. However, the problem is the political will to do this because GOCC said have become instruments for uh, well uh, are repaying uh, political papers. So, yeah. so, or some GOCCs, you can still keep them, but remove the operational side from it. And some of these GOCCs recognize that we conflicted ako, regulator ako, operator ako. Uh, but hindi ginagawa ng gobyerno yun because sayang yung kinikita ng GOCC na ito na binibigay sa coffers ng government. Uh, I do hope that we outgrow this tendency to try to make our money from GOCCs instead of from proper collection of taxes. Uh, the, I think the biggest problem ng gobyerno natin sa money is low, poor collection of taxes. If you take a look at our tax rates in the ASEAN region, tayo yung pinakamataas na tax rate at yet if you compare that tax to GDP ratio, we have the lowest. That may only means the poor tax collection lang tayo. It's not the tax rate that dictates it. Other, yung mga kapitbahay natin, mas patas ng tax revenue na because they're collecting well. Right. So it's always uh, best no, to, to remember no, that the free enterprise system no, is, is uh, having us the freedom no, to, to uh, pursue what we believe no, that, uh, that is uh, best for us. And of course, the government role for this is to allow uh, the entrepreneurs or individuals no, to make the most out of their economic freedom. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So thank you for that, uh, Doc Frankie. You know? So um, going back to the political uh, CSR, which is now a rising interest no, yeah. to, to businesses, no, especially to um, SMEs. No? So can you tell us more about the political CSR? So what is the difference between uh, a CSR, no, a, a regular CSR, and a political uh, CSR? Well, because uh, if you take a look at the uh, CSR, uh, you go, you you move from your economic responsibility, you progress up to fulfilling legal responsibility or compliance. Then we move up to ethical responsibility, wherein we do the right thing. And finally, to philanthropic responsibility, where we contribute to nature. Now, that's basically CSR. The only difference now is you now focus on uh, things that I either we try to influence government in governance or we try to fill in governance gap. Because like it or not, all countries, not all countries, all governments, they have a gap. Yung they are not able to pull, that's no government's perfect. They are not able to fulfill uh, what they're supposed to do perfectly. And uh, Pabella in his work uh, defines this due to three, three deficiencies. Number one is benevolence deficiency. Mm -hmm. well, of course, people are not doing the right thing. So the other one is competency deficiency. When, well, sometimes government does not have the competencies required for certain operations. Mm -hmm. That's why a lot of times they outsource the private sector. Eh? Correct. In a, in a lot of ways, private sector can be more efficient than government, and it's because a private sector must be freedom to move. In government, mm -hmm. there are regulations. There are Correct. a lot of things to comply with. And then, of course, the, the last one is power uh, deficiency. You, mm -hmm. The government does not have the, enough power to, to master. So uh, a lot of times, a lot of uh, corporations now are doing things like... Uh, Providing public goods, public service, health, mm -hmm. education, etc. A lot of companies are doing this. Even small companies. Eh, mm -hmm. yung mga, ano ito, yung mga kitchen, ki uh, what do you, they call this guy? You know, they serve food. Mm -hmm. uh, ano program? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, uh, uh, mitigating social problems. Mm -hmm. uh, well, it's supposed to be the role of the government, but that does not stop the private sector from being involved in poverty alleviation, gender inequality, racial, ethnic equality, corruption, mm -hmm. environ so environmentalism, so, so mm -hmm. degradation. And then, of course, 
the last one, of course, is in regulations, mm-hmm. policy reform. And mm-hmm. uh, and uh, we're, we're glad to say that uh, a lot of private sectors, people from from Clark, a lot of people from Clark, Mike, when they've been involved in a lot of policy reform, mga, we have our shares of, uh, of policy reform uh, now we can be proud of, like, for example, yung Open Skies. Mm-hmm. The battle for Open Skies was fought and won here in Clark. Because before that, uh, we had a virtual monopoly uh, aviation industry, in the industry. That's why it was so expensive to travel. Mm-hmm. But you uh, must stakeholders of Clark, working with some uh, agencies, some foundations, were able to push for uh, packet una packet open skies. Now it's virtual open skies na tayo sa Pilipinas. And let's take a look at this build, build, build project that is doing very well. The, now. And the reason why the build, build, build is so successful is because of convergence between agencies. Like, for example, the roll it. Roll it is a convergence between DTI and DPWH. That's why we're coming up with infrastructure that promote business. Uh, trip, the trip C program is a convergence between the um, uh, de- Department of Tourism and DPWH because now we have a lot of uh, infrastructure that promote in, uh, tourism. And that was first spot again here in Clark when it started out with a partnership for better infrastructure. It was, it was supported by the USAID, of course, and uh, the Asia Foundation. We were, hope, we were uh, asking for uh, infrastructure projects, like, for example, in Friendship Highway that used to be terrible, dilapidated. Then, and it turned out DPWA, uh, DPWA said, Oh, we'd like to build that, but we can't. It's not within our mandate. Pan lang kami, uh, national highways. And but tourism might have budget for that. So we went to tourism and then say, Yeah, we have money for that, but we, we don't know how to build it. And that's when they start the convergence program. And again, that was uh that was uh that was uh advocacy, a policy reform that started here in Clark. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and mind you, a lot of the companies that were involved in this are small companies, SMEs. See? Uh-huh. Even yung kwan, yung, 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 yung create to build, it started mm-hmm. as uh, train to, na mukhang train to Busan, mm-hmm. na trabaho. <laughs> so, sabi nila, mabaho pa rin. And then, right, you know, right. sitira, sitira na sitira, tini, sini, tinira na tinira, and now it's mm-hmm. like you. And a lot of the reforms that were made in that bill were due to the uh, representations made by people from from here in Clark. So we have one. There is within us a lot of political uh, political capital that we can use for political CSR. Right. So actually, that's one of the benefit here, no? If if you're locator in Clark, no, with the initiatives of our Clark locators leaders, no. Um, creating us no, an avenue for this one. But uh, for, for other um, provinces or for other communities, uh, Doc Frankie, what, you, what do you believe is the best way to, to, uh, to engage no, in, in, uh, in this kind of um, uh, political activities no, that, of course, no, as active citizen of the city or of the province or of the country, no, we have the responsibility to, 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 to take part in the nation building. So for other provinces na wala silang organized uh, organizations like Clark, no? So what, what is the best way to, to start one? Uh, I, I remember uh, about 15 years ago, we started the movement with uh, Bishop Ambu, uh, ano, uh, MP3, yung um, movement for... Uh, uh, ano ito? MP3, uh, movement, po, movement for Principled Politics in Pampanga. And it was a ragtag team. It started out with Bishop Ambo and some mm-hmm. business leaders. We organized and then we started uh, 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 lobbying, lobbying for political reforms sa electoral system then. And I think we were able to do a good job in trying, well, in trying to keep the, the, the competition uh, here. So it's all you need is to organize people. The moment you put people together, uh, business leaders, right-minded individuals, then it will work. And there are a lot, like for example, yung, uh, a lot of uh, provinces, they all have uh, uh, 
local chambers. The local chambers mm -hmm. could be a good uh, one. And then, of course, you have groups, uh, trade groups, like like HR Council. Mm -hmm. uh, baka, baka gusto ng Clark HR Council mag-branch out na. <laughs> Magpalagay mm -hmm. ng ibang chapter sa Subic mm -hmm. HR Council and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, it's fun. Um, the important thing is you get good people, the right people, organize them, and then uh, then you can make things happen. Right. So it's really you know, an, an initiative. No? So if you feel like uh, an organized community yet, so of course, no, take the challenge no, and be part of the the change no, sa ating um, nation uh, uh, building. No? So um, for, for Karina, no, as what uh, Doc Frankie have mentioned already, that the political CSR is about no um, um performing state like activities no so as as mentioned below in in, in terms of providing um um social problems like poverty alleviation gender equality and and um, racial no um or ethnic inequality um so to do uh, how does the the um, political CSR um let's say for example address and help narrow governance gap um gawin na natin dito sa sa Clark no uh, to to reiterate no so to to share a few so uh, nung, nung sa initiatives mo doc Frankie no um can you tell us more about the initiatives nga na ginawa ni ni doc Frankie and the team no to address uh, governance gap by performing state like function apart from um participating or engaging in formulation of regulations um self regulation industry regulation and global standard and rules Siguro, let's take a look at recently, no, naka pandemic tayo. I mm -hmm. think one of the things, well, we're still fighting for it. Uh, one of the things we're fighting for is, di ba, uh, last year, sinabihan tayo ng Clark, as being government, oy, magsara muna kayo. Mm -hmm. So you have to lock down for three months. Yet, nangungulekta siya na rental. Mm -hmm. Siya landlord natin, di ba? Mm-hmm. Siya nagbawal sa atin na huwag tayo pumasok tapos sinisingil niya tayo. Mm -hmm. So we're fighting for, uy, hindi niya tatama yan. Mm -hmm. uh, eh, pina, ikaw ang landlord ko, pinaalis mo ako sa kwan because uh, when you're renting, there is a, there is a surrender of uh, rights, di ba? Mm -hmm. right. You have the right to use this. But if, I, if you withhold that right from me, which I am paying for, I should, mm -hmm. I should not pay for it. So mm -hmm. we're fighting for that. The other thing is yung mga safety protocol. Nung una, uh, uh, they wanted to do impose certain safety protocol, which were which we felt na baka mas maganda yata pag-usapan natin ang safety protocol that you should impose per industry. Kasi kanya-kanya, mm -hmm. they have different ones. So, and, uh, and the good thing is CDC listened to us at Akinik siya, and then yeah, they, uh, we were able to arrive at safety protocols na katanggap-tanggap sa lahat. Uh, mm -hmm. which, is, which is why you'll notice na uh, more or less um, ang recovery dito inside Clark is a lot better than outside Clark because I think there is a greater dialogue between the government and the, and the, and the, go, the governing body and the govern. Mm -hmm. uh, these are things that we have to be part of. Uh, like uh, last year, uh, DNR a few months ago, DNR wanted to impose DAO, uh, mm -hmm. DAO 2016 8. Mm -hmm. Ano What is this? Well, it's a regulation that states na yung effluent, yung, yung palabas natin na tubig, mas malinis pa kesa sa drinking water. Mm -hmm. And, for, us, and for, uh, for Clark Water to comply with that, they will have to in, 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 implement, put capital investment that will increase our cost of water by about 50%. And we put tooth and nail. First of all, we have one of the highest, we have the highest cost of power here. We have one of the highest cost of water and it's going to be higher. So, nakipag-dialogue kami with, uh, with DNR, CDC, everybody. We got everybody on the table, pati local government. And, um, well, well nagkaroon ng compromise, although not, not as good as we, as we wanted, pero nababa na yung increase. So, you know, <clears throat> so, 
even at the local level kasi it's like yeah, one uh, environmentalism you think you think globally but you act locally and Correct. the local level marami tayong magagawa rito mm-hmm. and sa, sa 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 HR council kayo you are doing a lot of this by tying up with government diba tomorrow mm-hmm. you'll be talking with dole and all of this and again mm-hmm. this is to ensure that uh, well you protect your locators of course without promoting abuses but uh, by creating better dialogue between the dole and the other government agencies now there is great industrial peace uh in, in we have to one of the things uh, we can be proud of dito sa clark is i think we have relatively good industrial peace dito mm-hmm. I think that's very true. And I think it's because I think we're we're going out of our way to make sure na everybody plays fair. Everybody mm-hmm. plays nice, diba? So, mm-hmm. uh, and H- HR uh, of course plays the central law role in this uh, in this uh, field. So Right. Thank you for for that uh, Doc Frankino. So, um also part of our political responsibility now that uh, we have no an upcoming um national election which will happen next year, no. Um do also businesses have a political responsibility, no, to encourage employees to vote especially, you know, that uh, uh, most of the employees now are are very um, constricted with time. Um, number one, because of the the uh, uh, challenges no, or threats posed by the pandemic situation, um, it's really it's really hard for them to to take a day off, no, to 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 uh, put some time, no. Uh, yun nga lang, yun sa pag sa iba sa pagre-register lamang eh. So um, what uh, how as what as businesses uh, can do, no, uh, to to encourage employees um, to both and do, of course, no. Um, yun nga, no. Uh, do we really have, as businesses, uh, have a political responsibility to encourage employees to vote? Well, yeah, of course, as we've been talking about, uh, uh, government plays our, the ease of doing business is a function of government. And if we have good people in the government, we will have good business. And, uh, and the thing, especially when you're talking about national elections, um, and then, National elections have become mostly ano, popularity contests. Basta mas kilala ito, siya yung may recall, siya yung mm-hmm. And yet, tayo naman siguro, we have a better position to know sino sa mga government officials na ito, like for example, if you're voting for senators, sino sa mga senator na ito ang mga nagpapas ng bills na nakakatulong mm-hmm. sa in making the 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 uh, uh, the country more... Uh, yung more business friendly or more uh, so more or less may discernment tayo ng konti and we should uh, also provide uh, guidance to our employees so because uh, I think it's it's our uh, we are that's one of our political capitals we are the employers of most of the voters mm-hmm. diba? since we employ the voters we are we have us this is our once Every uh, three years, na may influence sa tayo sa government, uh-huh. may political capital, and so the, so and if, and if, like for example, let's talk about a certain church that accounts for ten percent of the vote. Mm-hmm. They are since they are very active in that role, nila mm-hmm. very power, they have become very powerful, mm-hmm. and tayo we account for most we employ most or most of the voters so mm-hmm. we have we should be able to help influence uh, uh kung sino lalabas uh, it's our responsibility to make sure na we try to come up with the best candidate for that and at the same time let us allow our employees let's give them time out to vote baka biglang kakaltasan mo pa na sweldo para magvote siya uh 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 <laughs> I think uh, it's our responsibility uh, to allow them to exercise their right. Right? Mm-hmm. Uh, 
that is the very definition of democracy, the ability to vote. And let's not take mm-hmm. it away from them. And let's even make sure that they, uh, yung pangangalagaan nila. A lot of mm-hmm. times kasi hindi na pinapangalagaan itong ability, yung the right of suffrage. Mm-hmm. In other countries, nagpapakamatay yung mga tao just to be heard. Okay. Here, we are being, we're, let's not lose by default, di ba? Mm-hmm. And they have already forgotten no their rights nga eh uh, basically no so so you mentioned a while ago no yung pagbibigay ng leave sa kanila uh, doing voters education so um uh, again no as as uh, business leaders doc franky um what are what will be the initiatives no um businesses can can uh, do as a base, best practice no in terms of initiatives either webinars or training um to help support no employees to to vote and participate especially in this coming um, national elections uh, uh, yeah i think we should yeah we should attend to this because remember the contract between employer and employee has been evolving dati rate nung unang panahon if you hire somebody yung social contract niya is lifetime employment and nowadays i think the the contract the commitment is development the develop total development of the employer, of uh, of the worker uh, whether it's to giving them more skills better attitude and all of that and i think this comes with that total development commitment we'd like to make everybody here better persons and uh, and uh, i think when it's a given that we should also train them on how to be politically responsible because you cannot uh, you cannot have good governance good governance without participation mm-hmm. ayun correct so that that's a very uh, a nice no uh, takeaway or keywords no, uh, for today's sessions so thank you very much uh, doc franky no Villuen Weva, for for uh, for uh, accepting our invitation no to be our guest uh, dito sa ating Clark uh, HR Council, HR on the go show. So before we close, no, are there any closing remarks or are there any invitations that you would like to to uh, to send, no, our viewers, no, especially na meron din tong live sa ating YouTube uh, page uh, and and YouTube account, no, uh, they will really uh, get back to the videos, no. So any imparting message or reminders that you would yeah. like to share? Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you again for inviting me. It's been a pleasure and and congratulations for uh, the things you've been doing for uh, human capital development uh, in Clark, okay? And since you're now broadcasting wherever you're heard. Now, well, my parting message is, of course, is for employers, for owners of SMEs, you have the power. All you have to do is act. Please act. Now, and then, of course... And please train your people. They are your biggest assets. Hindi, hindi, hindi kwan lang yun. It's not a motherhood statement. It is, in fact, true. If you take a look at all the big corporations, 85% of their market value is intangible. And that is embedded in human capital. Thank you very much, Doc Frankie, for that uh, very uh, good reminder, no? So uh, thank you, Doc Frankie, and I hope you uh, you stay safe, no? And uh, again, salamang, maraming salamat, no, for for accepting our invitation. And of course, congratulations again, no, for the uh, role ng ano ng being the new president of uh, City College of Angeles City. All right, thank you, Doc Frankie, and ingat sila. Thank you, thank you. All right. So now, um, as we close our third episode for for today, no. So it's really best to remind ourselves that even as uh, um, SMEs, even as small organizations, no, we have no our fair share in doing no and participating um, uh, to become politically responsible in, in the initiative of nation building. So of course, no, this is our moral uh, imperative, no. So we are all um, facing a crisis of uh, conscience that calls us no, to, to reconsider how companies, no, uh, political activities are affecting the very systems of which market democracy and society depend. So it's, again, best to participate. No, A good start is best to, to participate no, sa, sa nation building is by participating to our local chambers, to our uh, um, organizations like SILA and CHRC. No? So this is for us to 
yun nga contribute no to the um, political aspects no dito sa ating um, uh, city province or even in the Philippines so with that no we'd like to close this uh, uh, program now and thank you again for uh, watching us no dito sa ating third episode and catch us again um, next time no next other uh, Tuesday no so again uh, bukas po ang ating um, 23rd GMM so uh, for more details please visit the following Facebook pages Clark HR Council for the GMM and then for our next certification program you can visit CPHR Philippines so with that again no I, I said uh, my thanks and of course ingat sila palagi no and uh, malapit na ang Pasko no maganda na tayo thank you everyone and uh, ingat bye